everybody, my name is Ted Forbes and welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. Today we're going to talk about slide film. This is the third installment in our film series. And I want to talk about uh, slide film. It's a different process than what you find with C41 print film. It is also color, much like C41 is, but slide film is actually a chrome or a transparency type of film so it does not shoot as a negative it shoots or it, it develops into a positive positive. and the whole reason for this was rather than to be printed or done on enlarger it was meant to be projected so you guys probably if you're my age you remember the old days where people used to go on vacation and come back and they'd set up the slide projector and they'd bore you for hours with slides of their vacation and that was the the idea behind slide film if you have a negative you can't shoot through it and have it look real everything's backwards and you know inside out in terms of color and so what I want to do is talk about um, transparency film. It has a completely different look to it than color does, uh, excuse me, than C41 color film does. And I think this is the interesting thing. The colors tend to pop a little bit differently. Um, usually these films are designed to be really nice, so they're lower grain. Um, so anyway, I want to, let's go over and I want to look at what's commercially available today. I want to look at, compare some of the different looks that you can get out of slide or transparency film. And uh, by the way, this is usually called E6 film too. So if you want the chemical name and not the, the chemical process name and not the street name that's what it is so come on over let's have a look okay so today we're talking about color transparency film or e6 is the chemical process that this undergoes and there are quite a bit of differences between this type of color film this color transparency and what we talked about last time which was color negative um, color negative film uh, you know much like black and white film except you add color into it um, what it does is it produces a negative onto the roll of film and you know like I said that uh, you know color transparency film is it produces a positive so what you see is what you get and it's obviously was used to be projected from behind and that's why we called it slide films because people would go have their slides made you go on vacation bring back your roll of 35 millimeter film if you shot slide film you could put it in a slide projector and project it onto the wall so it works in a different uh, environment than you know an enlarger or a darkroom type setting so that was you know the main main reason people used or had developed um, you know color transparency film so this is a positive and you know it, there are some differences between this and the color c41 which is a negative film uh, one of the the most notable traits you're going to find is it, it the, the grain is almost non-existent in slide film uh, it, particularly at lower speeds and that's really all you can get is 50 and 100 speed films <laughs> in this in this you know the world of transparency film uh, you can actually get I think Fuji makes a 400 speed but that's the fastest it goes so we're dealing with much slower film types but you don't have any of the grain and sometimes the colors are just slightly more vibrant uh, um, you do have a lower latitude of exposure than you do with C41. So these are just some differences I'm just kind of throwing out there. Like for C41, you're going to have more stops of light. So if you have a high contrast scene and you want to retain more detail in the shadows, um, you know, and in the highlights, you know, if you use uh, something like the Portra from Kodak, you're going to have a lot of zones to work with there. Um, C41 is much more narrow. It's much more like, you know, what we're seeing in digital cameras, uh, particularly in the last couple of years, even though that's starting to change now. But but uh, it's just a narrower bandwidth, if you will, on you know how many stops of light you're going to have. But the trade-off is is that the color is simply beautiful, and you get very little grain. So if you want to shoot some really interesting color photos, I think still using slide film and you know scanning it into a computer is an incredible way to shoot. Um, now here, here's you know that's the good news is it's really cool stuff. The bad news is is that it's becoming very very hard to find. Um, there are exactly two manufacturers that are doing slide film right now. Fuji, which still does quite a bit, even though they're starting to do less. And then at really Agfa has, you know, basically one type that you can try and it's even hard to find. So um, really what we're dealing with is, is, is Fuji. And that's not a bad thing. Fuji makes incredible film. They always have. Uh, they're the only ones still doing it. Kodak dropped out of transparency film last year and it's too bad because they had the Ektachrome stuff, which was really good. So if you can still find Ektachrome on eBay or if you can find some sitting around that's been refrigerated or something, shoot on it. It's, it's still easy six film it's amazing uh, but Kodak got out of that and it's too bad because it was some good looking stuff um, the Fuji I have used in the past and I really love what they've done essentially there are two film types that you're dealing with and they kind of come in some different speeds but there is Provia and there's Velvia they like these Ia names so you have Provia and Velvia and the biggest difference between the two is something like Provia you're gonna have um, it really has a nice way of sweetening colors much in the way E6 does um, but it stays more accurate 
accurate than not with the color representation that it's showing. Uh, Velvia, on the other hand, was designed to saturate various colors, particularly blues and reds. Um, personally, I love them both. I think Velvia is a little bit more difficult to understand when it looks best. Um, it's a little more specialized. Some people will come in here and swear by Velvia. Velvia is the stuff that, you know, they love that saturated look. Um, the problem I have with Velvia is that, you know, if you're dealing with colors that are kind of naturally already lit in a way that they are saturated, it looks really cartoonish and it can really look weird. And I'll show you a difference in a second of a couple, couple scenarios of that. Uh, whereas Provia retains things, you know, a little more accurately or, you know, uh, with a little more true definition than Velvia does. So that's really what you're dealing with are those two. Now, Velvia comes in a 50 and a 100, and I did hear rumors that they are discontinuing the 50. The 50 is the classic. Um, but what Velvia is really great for is, like, let's say you're shooting and you're outside and you're in the summer and you have a little bit of haze to the sky like most people do when it gets to be August, particularly in a place like Texas. You can use Velvia, and what it does is it will saturate some of the blue um, spectrum of the light that you're seeing, and it ends up looking like you have much prettier skies than you do, which is kind of nice. Um, it can also saturate reds in a similar fashion and I'll show you a difference here um, a couple of years ago I was uh, up in Jackson Hole Wyoming and if you've never been to Jackson Hole it is very near Yellowstone Park and is just simply gorgeous uh, there is a little log cabin that sits just right outside of Jackson Hole and this is probably one of the more photographed postcard places um, I got up really early in the morning and went and photographed this thing and they were actually shooting a um, catalog and I can't remember who the catalog was for, but it was a clothing catalog, Land's End or something like that. So there were two people out here with horses, this cowboy and this cowgirl, and they had these horses. Anyway, it was kind of fun. Um, they didn't mind me shooting around them, and I didn't hang too long. But uh, anyway, uh, these are two, and, and you have to bear with me. These are two formats. This was a 35 millimeter image, and this one over here was a 120 medium format. And so there is a format difference in the two, but note the colors on here. Now, this is with Sunrise. The Velvia over here is much more saturated. You have more intense oranges. Uh, uh, and notably, you have more intense colors up here in the mountain range. Uh, you do pick up a little more shadows than you probably would with C41, but this is what it does to the color. Um, for my taste, this was a little much. Um, this was Velvia. The other one was made on Provia. And you can see that the colors are still intense. They're still beautiful, but they're not over-exaggerated or over-cartoonized. Um, you know, uh, Mainly, if you note the blueness in the sky, and there's not much sky in that image, but uh, mainly if you look at the light back here that's reflected on the barn, it looks more natural with the Provia than it does the Velvia. Now, this does not mean one is better than the other. I'm just showing you these so you can see the difference between the two. What I find interesting is that that you do have a difference in look like that. Um, but also notably, you know, in the right setting, Velvia can actually make your colors a little more intense than they actually are in person, which is kind of interesting. So again, another thing I would do is I would, you know, go onto Flickr or wherever. And, you know, if you search Velvia, um, and let's go search everyone's uploads and then we'll go over here and we will sort by most interesting. Um, you'll note that that produces a little more results. Um, anyway, if you come in here, you can kind of go through here and you can see that to varying degrees, there's a certain look to Velvia, especially in that blue spectrum, like this death shot over here, um, shots at dusk, things like that. Um, the reds can be very beautiful as well. And you're also going to notice that some of these photos probably are going to have a very cartoonish type look to them just because you know, stuff like this landscape here. Um, and I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's just, it has a more false sense of color than something that's natural. So if you, you know, do the same search for Provia, um, you're going to see the differences between these two. I think they're both beautiful. I think they're both amazing looking films. And, um, you know, get your hands on them and use them while you still can. Uh, like I said, Kodak pulled out of slide film last year and they're no longer producing. And I think it's a travesty. Um, but that's just the way it is. And most people, in fact, I, a lot of professional photographers I talk to, it's just easier than having to scan things and they would rather work with digital for color than they would slide film. I'm not sure I agree with that just yet. I still think that there's a beauty to using slide film um, that it just captures colors in a way that I just don't see digital cameras doing without a lot of post-production work. And even then, you know, there's time involved and it's not quite what it was, you know, when it came off the film. So I, I still personally, I think for color, um, it's just, it's an aesthetic thing, but I love slide film. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about today um, that I think is important um, that people have asked me about is there is such thing as cross-processing film. And cross-processing means that you're going to shoot color film and you're going to have it processed in the opposite chemical than it was designed to go into. So for instance, if you're shooting slide film, 
you know, take it to the grocery store and have it developed in C41 chemicals. Uh, you can do the same for C41 and have it developed as slide film. Uh, it also is kind of interesting to use expired film and uh, film that's maybe been overexposed to heat, stuff like that. Um, it is interesting what you can come up with. I haven't done a whole lot of cross-processing myself. I've done very little, uh, but it does have a really interesting kind of cool effect. In fact, I would be willing to bet that these were cross-processed. I don't know that. I'm going on a limb here, uh, but it has kind of this weird look where your, your blues and purples and stuff start to come out a little differently. And that's what's known as cross-processing. Um, basically, the idea is that you're, you're developing it in the wrong chemical, <laughs> but it comes out correctly. Um, and I talked about this a little bit last time because some of these uh, films like the Crossbird and the Redbird and stuff like that that Agfa is producing, uh, the, the stuff you can get from Lomography is really, um, it's it's basically film that hasn't been kept up to date, but you know, it has kind of a look that you can do when you do this cross-processing. Um, and cross-processing is simply a chemistry thing where basically there's a way to, you know, do the wrong thing and come out with something kind of cool. And so experiment with that. Try it and see what you think think um it doesn't work the same with black and white film and i have been asked that um you can't to my knowledge just because the it's built differently the the emulsions but i don't think you can do black and white at all uh in slide or or c41 process uh, you can process color film in black and white chemicals i don't recommend it there's no real reason to do it it is a mess and stuff cuts glupping off of there and it's it's really quite disgusting um and there's also an interesting process that that i haven't talked about on here that probably needs a dedicated show um but people ask me all the time about developing in what is known as caffeinol which is a homemade developer that's made with coffee and vitamin C, essentially. Uh, this is for black and white film. And that one might be something that's interesting to look into. Um, I haven't really developed a big passion for it myself, um, other than as an exciting exper experiment that you can do. Um, I don't think it saves money so much on um, chemicals just because they're not that expensive to begin with. Anyway, we'll do that show another time. I just wanted to acknowledge that today since we're talking about all this. And then the other film type we haven't talked about too much is infrared film. And to my knowledge, I think Rolly's the only one still producing this. It's really hard harder to find and what it does is it's a black and white film that deals in the upper tier of the color spec or the light spectrum into actually reds that you can't see with your eyes and so what this means is it starts seeing heat and uh you know we can here you know, we're going off subject here but why not if we go back into um into flicker let's do a search for infrared just because i want to show you this infrared and let's see what comes up here. And you can actually modify digital cameras to be infrared cameras as well. But I'm looking for the classic black and white look on some of this stuff. Essentially, the idea, yeah, you can see it in these. Um, yeah, these are film images that were done this way. You lose a little bit of resolution and sharpness generally with infrared film. Uh, but infrared black and white, see how these trees went to white? And there's two reasons they're doing that. If they're giving off heat, um, it's because it's in that infrared spectrum. It's starting to see those as a white color. Um, whereas skies, which are blue, tend to go really dark, particularly if you use a red filter. And you don't see enough of the sky in that image to be able to tell. But um, anyway, it's really an interesting way to uh, to make photographs because the, the contrast here is one that's really good. You can see. Uh, Notice how the sky is almost black and how the trees and the grass radiate white because we're seeing this in a different color or light spectrum um, than what is visible to the naked eye. And this is rendered in black and white. So that's what infrared looks like. And it is generally black and white process. You can develop it in black and white chemicals. It's just the way the emulsion is made. It's getting harder and harder to find this. You can modify digital cameras to be infrared cameras they don't look the same um they're still cool but it just there's a look to this film that you know you just can't get otherwise um if you're interested there is a movie that was made in uh cuba actually oh about late 60s early 70s around the time of the cuban missile crisis that was kind of rediscovered by martin scorsese and some people i i talked about it on the show last year but it is called uh soy cuba and a long scenes of that were shot in infrared um in these sugar cane fields in cuba and has an amazing look to it's 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 simply gorgeous anyway i know i'm talking a mile a minute and uh just trying to get all this stuff in for the show today but uh if you have any questions leave comments shoot me an email whatever um just know that the days look to be a little bit numbered these days on slide film and i think this is too bad um there's still a lot of c41 still a lot of black and white um slide film is a different bird so if you're going to shoot on it start ordering it and get some i will post a link under this episode as i've done in the previous two on where you can find slide film and what is available and we'll keep that as up to date as we can as long as you can still get slide film. Okay, so that's an overview of slide film, transparency film, chrome film, 
E6 film, whatever you want to call it, but the positive and not the negative variation of color film. And, you know, again, I think it would behoove everybody to at least experiment with some of this stuff because I think in the next 10, 20 years, it's going to be real questionable of whether or not we're going to be able to shoot on this process again. I think this will become alternative process one day when it's really difficult to do. Um, but because of the techniques involved with manufacturing, um, anything, any kind of commercially available film, black and white, slide, um, and even C41, uh, it's really hard to ever make these at home. So this could be a lost art one day. Um, I hope not. I love shooting on film, obviously. And, you know, get an inexpensive 35 millimeter camera at the very least and go out and shoot some of this stuff so you can experiment with what that look is. Go scan your stuff into the computer and you're going to be amazed at how well it holds up against modern technology. Um, and in some ways I think exceeds it just because it has that soul element to it. And there's a real warmth that comes with film. Uh, it's just a look. And uh, anyway, that's what I hope I've communicated over these last couple episodes talking about film types. So anyway, once again, I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching The Art of Photography. I'll see you next time. Later.